back to your first run in WWE, <clears throat> um, Stardust, mm-hmm. a bit of a spinoff of your brother. Oh gosh, yeah. does right. Yeah. So <clears throat> how I know that you look, you're. I, I know that it's not your decision. You don't. Yeah. You don't have all total control over all of this. Yeah. But you, um, I admire how you went into that one hundred percent. Right. Like you, there, you can read somebody just looking at their face and tell whether yeah. they're really about this. Yeah. And like that would have been a tough sell for me. But you went one hundred percent into it for years. Right. And yeah, two, it was about your, a year longer than I thought it was right. going to be. <laughs> your brother, <laughs> yeah. But your brother's had this gold yeah. dust deal for a long time. Yeah. Um, and he had at the same time. I mean, I felt like that he he stuck with it. You yeah. Know? And he went, he went, he went with it. Um, and I saw, I was, I was kind of surprised at, um, how long you did. Yeah. You did go with that, and how long, how 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 you tried to make that work. Yeah. Um, if you could go, I mean, I know it's really a useless conversation of, of what ifs, but if you could go back to that point in your life, right, is there any way you avoid the route that you had to take into the independent circuit? Is there anything that you think, man, you know what, I wish I knew this or could have said this or maybe I could have went to this person yeah. to be able to sort of break the cycle? I'd say the only thing that could have changed the trajectory was had I been, and there was no way I was going to know this, but the guys I was jealous of, the guys I wanted to be in their spots, there was a level of work they were doing. Whether I saw it or not, that was next level. And there are plenty of people to blame when it comes to stardust. But as I have gotten older, more and more of the blame I put on myself. Because it's one thing to stand up for yourself two years in, when it's bottled up and it's ready to blow versus had I fought this battle six months in, had I bought, had I, had I, had I come to work every week and said, this doesn't work for me. If it's what we're doing, okay, I'll do it next year. But voicing those concerns, being a professional, being a part of the process, I had thought the process, that's why the, you know, people use that trust the process phrase. I even caught myself using it the other day and I hate this phrase because the process doesn't always your your work creates the process. And I think that would have been a difference maker had I looked at somebody who was at the top spot and said, okay, what do they have? And not just compare, but let me work harder. Let me do better. Um, and and if, even if I had not got that, maybe having sounded the alarm earlier that this was not good. I was yeah. not happy with this. This is a step back from where you had me and it's getting step back, step back, step back. But you didn't. I, I, I just... You were, uh, was it your, you felt like you weren't um, established enough to make that claim? I felt like at the time when I, when it finally set in, it wasn't so much established as it was, I felt insignificant to the show. You know, we all, we talk about undesirable to undeniable. Like I felt undesired. Yep. And from a show perspective, if you're the guys putting this show together, that wasn't incorrect. They they didn't need Stardust. You've got John Cena. He's wrestling The Rock. You've got this. You've got Undertaker. You've got these things. They didn't need me. And it's not a fair industry. So I needed to know what to do to make them need me. Mm. Like, I want them to need me. So what, guys, could, what could have you done then if you would have done it six months in? Like, what kind of creative liberties would you have sure. been afforded? So. The biggest thing, and this is going to sound silly, but this is the truth. The biggest way to kind of turn your fortunes around in the sports entertainment wrestling space is get in the best shape of your career. Get because it's still a vanity business. You're still out there half naked, oiled up. You're still out there. You're seeing it's and also the the guys behind this operation they still have a love for bodybuilding they're in great shape they're in custom made tailor suits you know tailor made custom suits when they come to work that's a huge like it's one of the first things i tell people because it helps your mindset too. get in the best possible shape now had i gotten the best possible shape of my career uh and had i gotten hey i'm telling you i want to be cody rhodes and not stardust let me get new gear to present that to you let me have this all done up Instead of doing that, I just bottled, you know, I, 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 I let it swell. Yeah. I didn't do the things. And I think I thought, oh, if I don't do the, if I do them, they'll still not, 
But that's not the case. It really is. There are so many young guys and young girls that it's the first thing. I, it's not. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. But if you get in the best shape of your career, it turns heads. It makes people, you know, do do that. At Stardust, all of a sudden, had eight percent body fat and six pack and shredded and was handsome again. Maybe they. What are we doing? Yeah. Like what are we What are we doing with this in this outfit? You know what are we doing? But and they wouldn't have put a mask on him, right? Well, so <laughs> at one point, I you know I had the paint for the Stardust run, but there was an actual mask yeah. that was originally oh, pitched, yeah. and I put it on my. This was an area where I spoke up. I put it on my head, <laughs> and it's like the classic condom blowing up. It looks so <laughs> bad, and I get like there's an element of humor to what I'm going to yeah. do here, but they can't. Well, you gotta be laughing with you. They can't be just laughing right, at right. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was. It looked. It looked like a condom meets Electro from the old Spider-Man comics, and that was one of the few that I, I told. Uh, I was Vince. I told him I was like, I can't do the mask. It just looks so bad. And then he, I went and had to shave my head like Dustin. So the trade-off was just. Oh God. gosh! <laughs> it sounds no, awful. Yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> but I was glad I never. The, I'm glad the mask never saw the light of day. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how long Stardust did have. Actually, had a couple yeah. of milestones and had some fun <laughs> moments, and I did go into it fully committed to try and change it. But it just it it wasn't going to get me anywhere. Can you believe that we've had seven months without an NFL game? Well, good thing that's finally over. The NFL is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you get. Download now and use code DJD to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's code DJD only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. You went, you said you, the last couple of years were really difficult. Yeah. Um, You know, I, I, uh, you know, I think everybody can relate to having a period of their life where professionally they're, you know, that's sort of bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult to figure out a process of a way to get out, but you, you leave, right? Yeah. You go, you go in to the independent circuit. Um, <clears throat> that was, uh, like, I mean, it, it's a hell of a f- freaking story. I mean, it's yeah. amazing now, but going back to that moment i'm sitting there thinking golly that must have been like okay going out of this store may never be able to come back exactly through it. i would yeah. assume that yeah yeah um it was so personally scary but it was my job you know my dad had passed away at this point and i had i had kind of absorbed his role it was also my job to present a front that it wasn't we weren't it wasn't as risky as it made as i made it out to be it right. was so risky like I joked with people all the time oh you know I I was actually one of the wrestlers who was good with my money I'm gonna be okay outside of WWE that's not true right I was just like in I I was it was check to check and then the checks are gonna end Mm -hmm. and now it's and now it's indie payday indie payday and you all these different you create these revenue streams and do these things so it was very risky and God bless her my wife just believed yeah. had she not believed this wouldn't have worked she believed how close to your dad's passing was yeah. this going on uh, i think i hung around for a maybe a year so when your dad passes away yeah um you lose this sort of uh you lose the bumpers in yeah. the bowling alley right yeah. to keep you in out of the gutter right it's for i not so much the gutter but really like you know my dad was like hey man if i had a major decision right Damn, that's easy. I'll just go ask him what he 100%, thinks. 100%. Yeah. I might not love what he's going to tell me, but I know that I'm not even going to f- I'm going to get yeah. the truth. And so when that's gone, I, and you're sitting there with your career at stake, like trying to make the right decision, trying to decide whether this is what I need to do, you've got great support from Brandy, your wife. Yeah. But still, like in your mind, are you thinking, are you wondering, like, 
you know, am I making this, this is I making this decision because I'm a little bit psychologically distraught over yeah. the death of my father and the, oh, the, yeah. the, the, the mourning of that and, and the lot, the void that yeah. that's created. Right. So <laughs> did I need, am, is this like a bis, massive mistake? Hmm. Right. Cause I really don't know. I can't, I can't know whether yeah. I'm making the right decision or not. Did you have those moments in that, in that, you know, year, year and a half, two years after of questioning these decisions? What what I think really took over for me was definitely the such grief, not knowing how to deal with grief, um, and then having the grief. I mean, obviously something that you you very few people maybe understand this, but having the grief regularly in your face, mm-hmm. you know, you went back to the track, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like I had to go back to the ring and fans want to tell you mm-hmm. how sorry they are how sad no no shit. me too yeah. you know like he was my favorite that's what i always say when fans say hey my your dad was my favorite I say he was mine too yeah. you know um but what what became of that was whether right wrong or indifferent i was i didn't have the phone call anymore i did not have a mentor anymore that i wanted to reach out to so what i had was here's what i learned i'm going to do everything my way a hundred percent, whether good, bad, I'm going to do it my way. And I learned a lot of this from a lot of the tricks I used and things I did to rattle the cages and, and, and this battle when I was going against WWE, it was stuff I learned at WWE. Like, Hey, you guys taught me this. I was in the ring with you. I was in the ring with you. I had the dusty roads lifetime experience. I think I can make some decisions. I think I'm good enough now to, this is good for wrestling. This is good for this match. This is good for the city. Um, whether right, wrong, or indifferent, mm. I was doing it my way. Yeah. And there's a lot of incidents in that run that are not right. <laughs> but I was, nope, this is this is what we're doing here, folks. This yeah. is it. And, uh, and uh, I tell people all the time, I say, if you want to look at what letting someone get, like sometimes I get in my own way as when it comes to my own creative. And there's a prime example. When I was in this company uh, named Ring of Honor, wonderful company that really took care of me. And Joe Coff was the guy who got me. Amazing. But they just let me do whatever. WWE guy. People are coming to see him, you know, because they were smaller crowds. He's got a big autograph line. That's whatever. And one of the things I did was I had two mascots that were people in bear suits. It didn't make a lick of sense and they'd be at the signing stamping with me one was a business bear one was a drug free bear it was all this nonsensical uh like it had stemmed off a youtube series so it had it had roots and it had but it was if i look at the photos and you see me with these two bears behind me that's what creative freedom gone too far (laughs) that's 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 what it looks like i loved it but they're like very much even even you know as my time at AEW as uh, executive vice president also in my way a little bit i you know like someone else make a decision for me here you know